Wow, look at that. Wow. Oh, wow, look at that. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sherry. Hey, everybody. David Hi. Burns here. Good to be with you. And Sherry, nice to have you with us again. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking a look at a beekeeping video that came out, oh, a few weeks ago by Max is his name. And it's rated really high up on YouTube, and it's bottle-to-bottle -bottle beekeeping. It looks cool. It, it did. It, it looks very cool. <laughs> I know, and I can't. I've watched it two or three times, and it's hard for me to wrap my head around this. It is, but but I like it when people try different things. Sure. I well, mean, yeah. you know, there's no reason to 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 not experiment. Yeah. You know, try different yeah. things and yeah. see what works. And Absolutely. what doesn't is fun. But when you when you put your videos in public on YouTube, guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> what? what somebody is somebody's gonna pick them apart. Oh, and that's what we're doing that's today. That's what you and I are gonna do today. <laughs> we're gonna take a look at this bottle to bottle beekeeping and think, what the heck? Does this really work? Does it work? And what are all the questions surrounding it? I'm surprised the beekeeping community has been so silent about this video. Mm, I, I, I couldn't hold my silence anymore. <laughs> All right. But I've heard very little about it. Nobody... I, I've never seen it before either. I've seen yeah. some things kind of similar that people do yep. with bottles and yeah, that exactly. sort of stuff. They seem like they kind of run their, yeah. you know, run their time and then that's kind of it. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah. We'll see if this never one gain a... any traction, do they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see if this is longer lasting. All right, well, let's, uh, let's keep taking a look, Sherry, and we'll make some okay. comments along, along the way here. It All looks right. like he's made his own uh, way to allow the honey to drip out there like that. And uh, he's an interesting young man. He's got a cabin out in the woods in Russia that he does a lot of woodworking. So is he a beekeeper? <sighs> well, apparently he is now, but uh, I, most of his videos are more of the skills that he holds in woodworking and metalworking. Okay, yeah. so he is a skilled woodworker. He's and a he law. has I think he's made... A... Yeah. Uh, um, so is this inside his house? I would assume so, yeah. He said he was a okay. lawyer. So he has a way of, of allowing the bees to come into a yeah, room. Like an observation hive, they have an exit and oh, and through he's the got, house. He's, yeah. got bee, he's got bottles sitting on That's a super. Of he's taken off a bottle super. A super bottle. A super <laughs> yeah. bottle. Yeah. Well. So the, the, the comb uh, is down below, I guess, a brood nest. Look at that. And he, look okay, at that. so where, where would a person get these great big huge bottles from? What kind of bottles are these? Because, see, look, they've got spigots on both ends. So what kind of a bottle is that? Yeah, I have no clue. All right. Yeah, so maybe know. you Might know, maybe somebody get. out there would know I mean, and could comment and we, say what this bottle is. Yeah. But maybe that's something he's put on the bottles? Because you would oh, have to have be. that on yeah, both. It, it looks be. like you have to have that on both sides. Yeah. So this is a honey super. Look how crazy the comb is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So he cuts it with a knife. A very sharp knife. What and is that he's pulling out there, Well, it looks David. like he put big toothpicks uh, through there to give the bees maybe things to hang on to. Oh. Or the bottle has more structure. Uh, okay. And so this super here, he's just removing all the comb. He's removing the yeah. comb. It looks like he cut through the plastic bottle with a knife. He did. Uh, I'm not sure about that plastic. You know, that's the first thing I thought, going too. Going into there. That, you know... I know it's a sharp knife, but there's got to be small particles of plastic when you cut through plastic that's yeah. getting into the honey. I don't know if that's a big deal, but it, I don't like I don't like plastic in general, yeah, especially small particles in my honey. Okay. But so, I, I do have to commend him. Uh, he, oh, yeah, it's I cool. I mean, it is cool. It's he, very he cool. Does, he, it is a nice amount of uh, honey in that bottle. And look at this so extractor dripper thing. So he's doing like a crush thing. and strain yeah. method, which yep. we do sometimes when we have wonky comb yeah, or, right. or we Absolutely. just want to get one frame and, you know, we want to sit there and extract the whole yeah. hive. We might just bring in one frame exactly. and do that and crush it through yep. cheesecloth and then he's letting it strain mm -hmm. down into a... A bottle down there. Mm -hmm. I'd move the bottle a little like, closer up. But, um, oh, look, he's probably built that himself. I'm oh, sure. so he's got a honey press that, he, a honey that press. he has Absolutely. built. Wow. That is 
cool. I that would be nice. worried in that little bottle. Yeah, I would want something big <laughs> and around, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, look, he did that too. Okay, he got so a he, bigger one. He, yeah. he, he moved that. Yeah, and he filled and, it right uh, to the top. Filled it up to the top, and then he's putting something else very down impressive. there. Very impressive. I'd love to taste well. that. It looks like it would taste very good, doesn't it? Here's some different bottles. There's some bees in that bottle. Look at that. Okay, so. That's um, the brood nest area. How do you feel about bees being in plastic like that? You know, they'd have to be in the shade, wouldn't they? If they yeah. were in the plastic... Around here, they oh, would. it gets so hot in the it summertime. It would get too hot. Absolutely. But, David, I also know that bees don't like that um, brightness. They don't no, like... No, so they not, need to be in the dark. They so do. You think, does they he do. do something else as far I'm as... I'm sure. They don't need... Goes? Yeah. Now, there's a now darker... There, yeah, that's a very dark bottle. So what... It looks like it has that coating like medicine bottles have that the ultraviolet lights can't okay. go through. I don't well, know if that's true. Well, now right? he's showing us something, something different. Different, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks a little bit more complicated to say, you know, you can get by without any equipment and without any frames, frames and yeah. without any extractors. This looks a little complicated. That this I looks would like think. a hive. That's so a circle. This is, <laughs> a circle hive. Um, it's a sideways uh, Langstroth frame. It is. A it's, bigger, it's just a Langstroth frame, and somehow he has put them into a Looks wrong longer. cylinder, and it's darker. So, yeah. you know, that was initially my question. That would take a lot of work to build that, a frame to hold a frame. But right. again, that looks nice. Right. No, it's pretty. It's yeah. very pretty. Now, in Illinois, we do have to have frames that are, are hives that are in, able to be inspected. So the bottle, oh, yeah. that super with a bottle that you can't gain access without cutting it. You couldn't do that here. Yeah, our laws say that a beekeeping inspector has to come to your property and be able to lift all the frames out, hold them and look at them and put them back in. Mm -hmm. So a little, little mm -hmm. bit of an issue there. Now so, look at these bottles. <clears throat> He's able to put three of them together. This is, <laughs> this is like when you put three boxes on top of each other. He has a pretty good knowledge of beekeeping. I think he's well versed in the beekeeping so art and skill. That does not. That looks like he's put something inside those bottles. Can you tell what it is? Oh, I missed that part. It, it looks it like, like frame it looks foundation. Like foundation. Yeah, so, I think you're right. So he Maybe that's what the toothpicks were for to hold that foundation. Foundation. So he has purchased foundation. Yeah. To put inside these. So, oh, and now so he's shaking bees off of another frame. Right. From, so yeah. you could do that with a package easily. You could shake sure. that in there. But he's shaking them off of a frame. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have to go in some sort of a, and they a go, netting to go into Yeah, the, and they're going down onto the frames, the, the foundation he put down there. Mm -hmm. So Now he's building, it a, a building a frame around the bottles to hold the bottles. Because, yeah, they would just fly everywhere mm -hmm. outdoors when they that's very interesting but to go back to the one of the main points about how you know you don't have to you you know buy all this equipment you don't have to it's not labor intensive this looks labor intensive to me david absolutely yeah so i'm not yeah. sure that yep. we're saving any time mm -hmm. um, now if you're a woodworker i guess and you've got time mm -hmm. on your hands that, that cool yeah yeah. But this bottle here that he's showing now, now this is some complicated. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> it's, it looks like glass. It, maybe it, it's really hard plastic or that it does. could be glass. So to be able to come up with some of these. Um, Look how they've attached the end of the comb there. Uh-huh to the glass or the hard plastic, I can't uh -huh. tell. It's cool to look at. It's a transparent beehive, but you're right. I believe that the young developing pupa really needs to have darkness. And I, I would be concerned about that. Even in observation hives, you need to put a blanket over it. So he's turning it, and I guess it's able just... To, he, I thought he was screwing it together, but I think he's just turning it so he's he just can showing view us. it. Yeah. I think he's just showing it to us, but mm -hmm. I also know from having observation hives that that's going to get all messed up with propolis and wax. <laughs> You're not going to be able to see. And the, the, You're not going to be able to see no. anything that's inside that bottle. Yeah, the, the bottle is going to become so traced on with all their, <laughs> like you said, everything in the hive. Uh -huh. So this is super uh -huh. he's taking off again, maybe? Let's it, see what's that, in here. Is that what that is? Yeah. So, but my big question, David, is how does he inspect to make sure his queen is okay and make sure he's not building yeah. a mite bomb in there. Yeah, I know. Is there, is he doing any kind of maintenance as far as... Well, I did read some of the comments below and some people have asked him, you know, how are you treating for mites? And they asked him a lot of hard, challenging questions and I was surprised he did have some good answers actually. 
on way that you could build these so that you could actually control mites and, and do your tests and apply your chemicals even to treat for mites. So he's thought through it. At first when I saw this, I thought, okay, it's just a guy throwing bees in a bottle, you know, and it was just gonna be like crazy comb, out of control mite bomb, like you said. Uh -huh. And by the way, a mite bomb, we use that term to mean somebody that isn't doing anything about their mites. Mites are expanding and getting really bad and flying with bees off to other hives. I don't think people realize too, when you don't take care of your mites, that infects all the other yeah, beehives and feral hives Absolutely. in your yep. area. Because more of those mites are going out with your meat, bees mm -hmm. and they're landing on flowers. They're getting a free ride to another hive. And your neighbor's hive. beehive yep. comes over or feral bees yeah. come over and they just pick up those mites. Yeah. You gotta take care of the mites. And that is cool. Uh, that it is. is cool. I, yeah. I like it when wow, people look at that. use things. That's a big block Ooh, of steel. I'm not sure I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad. You have to be oh. strong to do that. <laughs> and then he put an anvil on it that you, man, that was crazy. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> that was the anvil that the coyote was trying to throw on the Roadrunner. Yeah, Remember that yeah, show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always miss. That was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. It, this is what the video started with. Oh, there's a queen. There. That is a barren. Just moved. He said, "Just emerging from the queen cell." Boy, that looks like a. That's huge. That looks like a big queen. That's the hugest queen for, I ever saw. Are we sure that she's not Are those not two mated? queens standing by each other and not fighting? Am I seeing that correctly? Hmm. Wow! Why wouldn't they fight each other? Exactly. Okay, so he does actually have real. Real highs, regular, <laughs> regular hives. Back in the back there. Yeah, he's got those he some regular hives, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's experimenting. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Get some regular hives and try some in a bottle. Is is great. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to put bees in an upside down aquarium, just to see what they would do. You could see it all, all sides. You know. Oh, he's cutting out a strip of comb. Look at this. He's cutting right through the brood, though, and killing it. I kind of don't like that. Strips of brood. Strips of brood that he's going to put into those bottles. Okay, and then he's gonna he's gonna put them in there. So he's that's real, what that's yeah. what I wondered because yeah. it didn't look to me like he yeah. was just putting foragers in there. Oh and, yeah. And I thought, you know, something needs to be different than just a a bottle full of foragers. It would attract, but, you know, the queen and nurse bees down there to take care of that brood on there. Uh huh. He's really thought this through, hasn't he? He has, and, and, wow. and it's fantastic, but I, I I can tell already it would never Nobody, last here yeah, no one. for very long. We couldn't do that in the wintertime. We couldn't, no. We, we couldn't do that wow. in our storms. No. In our no, winds. No. We couldn't, we would not I be know. able to do that. They would not survive outside in no. in that type of a, um, a vessel. They just wouldn't. No. But I, I imagine there might be some people that live in some areas where it could be. That's a lot of that sticks. That could be a lot of fun. I don't know. That's a lot of sticks. Uh huh. It is. And some dowel rods. He's got some dowel rods up there, too. Yeah. And it is true. Um, that would be a very interesting demonstration type of hive, mm -hmm. an observation hive. That, that would be very interesting. What would happen here in Illinois if I had that on the side of my house mm -hmm. and the bee inspector came up and said, oh, you've got a bottle hive on the side of your mm -hmm. house? Well, there, you there's... You think they'd make me take them down? Oh, sure. Yeah, they would. Um, there's a lot of those kinds of things out there, too. There are people who build oh, a type true. of window frames. Yeah. And, you know, those don't have any movable hives and they also have some types of big flat boxes that you can put on the side of your um, yeah. outdoor on your wall oh yeah and again they're, they don't have any kind of frames or anything mm -hmm. it's it's difficult for them to live very long window and frame so those hives come, yeah wow. they, they come and they go oh yeah you know they because do. after a while people realize so well that was yeah. fun but they don't work <laughs> yeah right so I really think the traditional Langstroth hive, you know, I'm really uh, mm -hmm. pretty close to that way of starting beekeeping, especially. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, you know, what do you think about the flow hive, the worry hive, yeah. top bar hive? Yeah, there's so many oh. different kinds. And my answer is always the same. I really think it's helpful 
Yeah. It's not essential, but yeah. it's helpful to start with the Langstroth, traditional Langstroth hive. Why is that? Yeah. So you can get used to the most important thing is handling and managing bees. Uh -huh. And once you have uh -huh. a handle and able to manage your bees, you know then you can venture out and try other things. Yeah, you have to know those basics. Yeah. It's like learning to drive a car, David. It is. You know, we would never put one of our 16-year-olds in the great big conversion van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say drive. Yeah. You know, we might put him in just a you know uh, you, the yeah. beater first. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and then yeah. a, after they've gotten really good at it, we yep. know they have the control and they understand how to drive That's a, a car. Point. Then they can go on to the truck or the van yeah. or the so the, or the tractor or whatever. Yeah, the Langstroth <laughs> hive is kind of that traditional. <laughs> solid it's so easy hive to learn about. and it's it so is. easy yeah. to learn yeah. how to be keep with a laying straw yeah whereas if you start with some of these other ones that are a little bit more complicated right. then you may not quite grasp yeah. The, yeah. the techniques but look at that yay he heard me is he covering it up he's covering it yeah. up he heard me I should do that to my air window units before winter. I always forget. It's like I need. I forgot to cover my window unit. Cold that's, air is yeah, coming in. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like a window unit. Yeah, so that yeah. is on that's a tree. That's pretty impressive. And yeah. He's covered that, but insulated. Still, I think it's thick. Look at that. I still it's don't know that that would be a, appropriate for the weather that we live in. I don't know. I'm he's got to be sure in some cold can, places too, though. He, I think. he does, yeah. but I'm. But now he's wow, he, he talked just pulled about a tree out of the ground. Was... <laughs> wow. My gosh, Woo! did he just go and pull a tree he out of the ground? He's a strong man. Maybe he cut it first. But David, he said that this is contactless. Beekeeping. He did say contactless, he and did. he's made a lot of contacts <laughs> to that hive, hasn't he? Right, but I think he meant contactless as far as you Management. don't have to touch the oh, bees. Oh, yeah. I don't... And I know there's a lot of people that get scared of touching the bees right. and thinking, you know, I'd really love to do yeah. beekeeping if it weren't for the bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> You yeah. know, if I could just get the bees out of this yeah. scenario, then I would love it. I, w I wish I could keep cows as long as all I had to do was turn a crank and get the milk. I wouldn't have to tend to the cows. That's right. I could yeah. just have fresh milk, right? Yeah. Well, but that's not going to happen. It no, takes a lot not. of management you have to of manage livestock. the livestock. Oh, yeah. And I, I hope that's one thing that people understand when they're watching a video like this is you can't be contactless yeah, when it right. comes to beekeeping. Yeah, no, you can't. And that mm -hmm. everybody keeps wanting me to make a video about the flow hive. Oh. And I should make it, but it would be so short because I've never had a flow hive. And I really don't want to spend the money. They're so expensive. <laughs> they're more, they're to me, expensive. they're very, very expensive. <laughs> Three, four, six, seven hundred dollars, and I, I'm just, you know. Oh, I think I think you're a little short on oh, that. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to misquote it, so I'm throwing all these numbers out there. But yeah. it seems like you can get two Langstroths for the price of one yeah. Flow Hive. You but can. a lot of people, you know, I was at Maryland and we talked with a lot of beekeepers and entomologists, and they were saying people don't mind a bit throwing two grand at starting beekeeping, and it doesn't cost that much. But if you do Flow Hive, uh -huh. and I think. The reason I, okay, let me say this about the flow hive. Okay. My opinion of the flow hive is that I'm worried how people will perceive it. And we have, I talk about that a lot to other entomologists and beekeeping scientists. And their big concern is people will view it as a contactless beehive. Right. That you just put bees in the flow hive. Turn a valve and the honey flows out, and that's all you have to do. Not. It's not. Mm -mm. Whether you buy a flow hive or a Langstroth, the well, management is the same. It is, but a flow hive is a Langstroth hive. It, it's built the same, it's under the same. The same. Yes, it's exactly it the same, Frame. except it has that extraction tool in the super. Right. And that's the only thing. And, and there's, right. it's made of plastic. It I, might be a I little different so. size and eight frame and all that. But yeah, you're right. So so yeah. my my uh, opinion of the flow hive is that if you manage it just like a Langstroth and you don't want to extract honey the traditional way and you just want to turn a crank, I think people find that enjoyable. But if, I would. <laughs> But you still have to manage it, and that's not a fault. You I'm still not, have to. You still have to yes. inspect. I'm not criticizing exactly. the company at all. Uh, they've never claimed that people should not no. look inside. They've never made no. that claim. I'm just afraid some people might jump to that conclusion that you don't have to inspect or manage it or constantly be in there looking. 
So that's all. Yeah, you've got to and be able to take care of the mites, and you've got to test yeah. for mites, and exactly. you have to take yeah. care of the beetles. You're going to get beetles. Oh yeah, in a flow hive, just yep. like you are. Now look, he's putting hive. his own little. He drilled those he circles did. out. He he that's, made those. That's a lot so, of work, and, and wow, the accuracy. I would I wouldn't ah, be able to ooh. do that. I would just rather buy a hive. Wow, but it's he's got a lot of time on his hands. Like I said, and, he, he's yeah. so skilled, and he's a beautiful, skilled worker. He wow. is, and if you My can gosh. do that, how fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think he's doing it for fun. Uh, and Right, so oh, yeah. that would be But he, he's, mm -hmm. he is, uh, I, I'm sure when he made this video, he was going to, he I'm knew he was going to get this kind I, of reaction. I am so glad that he's wow. got that cover on there, because you could not do that without the cover. Yeah, that's, that makes me feel you a lot better. You cannot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could not do that without right. the cover. And I, I think it must be a, it must be a colder area, maybe where he's at too. So that that's going to give some thermal mm -hmm. insulation. Oh yeah, there you go, snow to it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. he's showing that it is cold there, but. Mm -hmm. I did contact him before we did this review, and I said, "Hey Max, can I do a review of your video?" And he said, "Sure." So he's waiting. Yeah, he, no, he he agreed to it, so we're not we're not just doing this without asking. I wouldn't do it without asking somebody. <laughs> I thought it'd be nice if he said no. I wouldn't have reviewed it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I had this ability, Sherry, to look at that blowtorch parts melt melting little lids onto screen and all. I mean, it's impressive. I like it. It but is. It's beyond what I can do. That's for sure. It is. It, it's it's beyond what most of us could do. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, well, I mean, I could do it. But it's beyond what I have time to do. That's for sure. Wow, look at that. Is that glass or plastic? Did he put air in there? He. It's a rubber seal. Mm hmm. Wow. That's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Talk about being creative. He built a hot water tank. Man, it's pretty impressive. He's putting, he's making them himself out of cutting them apart and making them bigger. Wow. So he's calling this a keg hive. Yeah. I think at the filming in, of in our video cheap. here, I think this one has 7 million views. And it hasn't been out that long. And you can see why. Isn't it entertaining? It's, it's I mean, I it feel is. bad. It, it really is very I, entertaining. Yeah. And, and um, I'm happy if it's, it's working for him. Look at that. It's, it's very clever. Yeah. I just can't imagine many of us out there can do it. Oh. Now, I want to say one thing about this, Sherry, too, is the weight of that. If that's, wow. You know what I mean? That's a lot of weight. It could be a hundred uh, more pounds in that large bottle. And if it's not secured really well, it would just collapse off of a tree or something. But it looks like he was building structures to hold that to a tree. So he is wanting to know people's opinions about it and see what other yeah, people ex that's true. experience. and. Yep. That is great. I mean, we do experiments here we do. all yeah. the time. I did a similar thing, Sherry, years ago, and somebody called me and said, I have bees in a, gosh, what do you call those things, uh, a whiskey barrel? It was a barrel. And mm -hmm. it was empty in the middle, mm -hmm. and it had a little hole in the top. Bees all went in there, and they made a bunch of comb. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to do what he did maybe five or six years ago, where I actually modified real frames to go down in there. And I didn't have real good success with bees having a good time in there for some reason. Mm. I don't know why, but it mm. didn't. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough. So let's let's give a really good uh, final opinion about what we think of bottle-to-bottle -bottle beekeeping. Sherry, what's the pros and cons? I'll let you go first. Okay. Pros. It does seem like it. you could use a lot of um, materials from around your house, you know, although... I haven't seen anything like that around my house, so we have to know. actually go out and purchase. My toothpicks um, are this big. I don't have big and, toothpicks. And the bottles and the yeah. The oh, bottles. we have the toothpicks. Those are shish kebab sticks. We don't have that many. That's... Of them. We'd have to buy a lot more. <laughs> we would. We'd have to go to the store and I buy shish kebab sticks. I think we have five sticks. of them, or maybe three. <laughs> so we need a lot more shish kebab sticks. And you know, it's possible you could keep catch swarms to put in that, but you still have to buy. You know, you still have to buy a package of bees. Yeah. Um. I I think it's fun. 
I think I'm always for experiments. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. it's great to try new things and to put a little video out there. I I, I think that's fun. I think mm -hmm. it's it's really nice. I worry about um, the bees themselves if they're being properly taken care of as far as mites and beetles and yeah. and any any kind of thing that mm -hmm. that might come up with that. And this would be very, very hard, I think, to deal with that if you needed to mm -hmm. do some sort of treatments, it, you know, even natural treatments. I think it would be very difficult to do mm -hmm. those within bottles. Here where we live, I'm not convinced, even with all that insulation, that, that we would be able to get anything like that to live yeah. through winter. I, I know it, it was cold there, but... I can barely live through the winter. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't uh, know how these bees I don't know if I'm going to make it this year this or not. Way. I know. But, it, you know, he was in a very, uh, air, a lot of trees in a forest area, a lot of wind block. We just don't have wind okay. block. That's so true. we have a so, lot of cold winds pounding hmm. our hives. What do you think? What do you okay. think? Okay. I had your same concerns. You know, initially I think, okay, what about ventilation? You know, because they're tight, oh. they're really tight. Can you imagine in the summer how much moisture would be I just think accumulating so, yeah. in those bottles, but, but I, I, I didn't notice. Maybe he's poked. He has. I think some he did. I think he is thinking and... about ventilation. I think he's making some holes or other valves and things to help ventilate the hives. So one thing would be the ventilation, and then the next thing would be the big thing is I can't keep that on my property in Illinois. It's against oh, the law true. for me. That's true. You know, even the super has to be able to be inspected frame by frame. And that's what late Reverend Langstroff invented, a way to take every frame out, look at it, put it back in, or harvest it, put it back in. And so you're losing a lot of energy by destroying the comb, you know, every time that you take all that comb out of the super, crush it, the bees have to rebuild they it. Rebuild it every, yeah. every year. So that's kind of a bummer there, but I understand sometimes that happens. It may not be a practice I would want to do, but the big thing would be just the legality. I can't keep bees that way. They have to be in, able to be inspected. Mm -hmm. um, the other things you mentioned, mite control. I mean, we have to really look carefully and do uh, every month, at least do a mite inspection, see how many mites we have. And I do know that he has spoken to that in the comments and, uh, um, so I think he's making plans or is thinking it through, thinking it through mm -hmm. about how to mm -hmm. implement uh, inspections, mm -hmm. how to control mites and how to apply any kind of mite treatment. Uh, he's not just blindly throwing that out the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I always wonder, too, about um, like dead bees. Do they you fall know, out and get carried out? It didn't. They, they, if they're coming in and out, the bees are going to yeah. carry the dead ones out eventually. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll do it. It may not mm -hmm. be as easy mm -hmm. for them to go through the bottle. Mm -hmm. It might be bottleneck. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bottleneck at the uh, funeral, but I think they're going to take all the dead bees out. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something to try. If that's something, something to that try. you want to try. And... You know, that's right. And, and some states here in the U.S. do not have any laws against this. They have no beekeeping laws on the books in some states. That's true, but it's very few. <laughs> it's very few. <laughs> very, very few. And, I mean, it, are they going to send the FBI out and confiscate that? No, nah, probably not. Mm -hmm. Your local bee inspector may ask you to take it down and then never show up again and not care if you take it down or not. And others may insist on it. It's Who knows what the reaction would be. But as a beekeeper, I do, we do everything we can to follow state regulations. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So I think all in all, it's a great experiment. It's the pros, the best thing about it is, it's just a hoot to look at. <laughs> to look and see things going on in that hive. It is. It's, it's fun. fun. And, and maybe some of our viewers have done something interesting like this. And Either they can on even purpose or know. accidentally, right? <laughs> right, right. They can yeah. you know, send us a video of something really unique like that that you've yep. done. We'd be glad to look at it. Yeah, and, yeah, we would, yeah. So, you know, okay, that's what we think about it, guys. Leave us a comment below and mm -hmm. tell us what you think about this whole bottle-to-bottle -bottle beekeeping. And uh, if you haven't seen this video, I hope some of these uh, scenes that uh, we're uh, showing you here will get you over to watch his video. And you can take a look at the whole video, see what you think about it, and give us your opinion in the comments below. Hey, don't be too hard on Max. 
He knows that it's uh, kind of a new experiment. It's experimental. And it's completely. not a, he knows it's not a traditional way. He's not saying we should totally change beekeeping. He's just showing some things that he's working on. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. We're going to get right back in the video, Sherry, but I want to just first select a winner for the book. And one of my recent videos, one of the prizes was one of our autograph books. Yeah. And we've chosen a winner. And why don't you announce who won the book? And the winner is Brent Kinsworthy. All right, Woo! Brent. Uh, he is he is worthy of the book. He now. is worthy of the book. Should yeah. I read his comments? Why not? It was interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. He said, oddly enough, I do watch your coffee break time videos. <laughs> <laughs> Well, coffee time. He says, I'm not one for jibber jabber. No offense. I I'm not either. You're not. I'm no, an introvert, I David. Yeah, and, I and, uh, yep. and I'm glad that you like to talk. I feel dead air space up. You do. Words. You, you do. do. I like to listen. You're I don't, a good listener. I, I can listen. So, Brent, <laughs> I got you. I got you, buddy. I know exactly what you mean. Yep. I'm not one for jibber jabber. I think it's because of your positive, encouraging approach. All right. I'm in management and deal with so many stressful personalities. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. hear you. I guess it's just nice to hear from someone who wants to build other people up rather than just trying to get what they feel entitled to. Backyard beekeeping. Woo! All right. Well, yeah, we make these go. videos for you guys. You yep. don't have to pay us a cent to make them. Nope. We've just always done it for fun yeah. and entertainment, but I do make, for the I education. I do make a lot of videos for you guys. And, and yep. you're lucky that... That David's the one that's well, thank you. that's bringing him to you because yeah. he is a very positive and encouraging person. Well, thank always you. has been. Always Appreciate has that. been. Thank you much. Thank you. <laughs> Were you coming in for a kiss? No, I will though. <laughs> it's not like you wanted one. If you give me a good enough compliment, you get a kiss. Oh, okay. Ooh, All right. did you hear that, lady? <laughs> <laughs> it's just you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brent, we'll get this right out to you today. So yeah, thanks Brent. for thanks for uh, <laughs> winning that book. Thanks for leaving a comment. And we're going to have more giveaways. Now, if you want to watch another beekeeping video, one that I just released the other day that's really good for you, it's about how to do a unique secret method of helping your hive expand and grow that I haven't talked about much at all. So click here on this video and you'll see how you can help your colony expand rapidly. Going to be important this spring. Show them the video, Sherry. Right there. Thanks, guys. See ya.